Hey guys, this is Joseph here, and I'm joined by Grayson and Spooks. Uh, actually awarded the coaching staff of the split. Yeah. They actually en- yeah. added my name on the bottom there. It's like a little like freebie for me, so that felt pretty good. But uh, let's really hear cool some CHR. let's hear some words from you guys. Like, I mean, crazy split, really, really uh, solid results. Super proud of you guys. So I just wanted to hear a little bit of reflection on how you guys felt like the split went. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a pretty awesome split. Um, I think we did a lot better than both external and internal expectations. Um, Wait, when, when you say internal, like, elaborate a little bit on that. What were the oh, internal expectations? I, I think, you know, we have certain benchmarks that we're looking at. You know, we just like, what what would be a good successful split for us? And going to the fact that we had, you know, rookies and it was my first time coaching as a in the LCS, like, we definitely weren't thinking we were going to get top two in the regular season. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, it was... Uh, you know, we showed, I think, promise and I guess like aptitude and competence, like faster than I thought we were going to be able to. And yeah, I, I can feel, I, I mean, I feel pretty good about it overall. I think now uh, is where I think maybe the pressure is going to start building because now that we've shown such promise so fast, I can, man- I can imagine like everyone's now going to be looking at us and be, now, our, our bar is now up here. Uh, so, you know, I feel like n- now it's time to like really go to work in the next, uh, split and, you know, in the off season when we go to Korea boot camp, it's like now is the time where we're really gonna have to put up or shut up, I guess. Um, but so far, you know, split one went, you know, beyond expectations. So really happy about that. Yeah. I mean, um, touching on like Grayson's point, I remember when we first started screaming, I think we were all kind of surprised at how low our level was, like how low our, our baseline was. We had so many, there's so many things as a coach when, you, when you've been coaching like the, the highest level for a few years that you forget that you have to teach some of the rookie players. So it was like, our level was so raw. We had like Quid and River who were noticeably already like up to that kind of standard. And then we were like, holy shit, like, there's so much we have so much work we have to do this split and for us to be able to perform as well as we did in such a short amount of time was i think such a pleasant surprise and i think i honestly feel like the main positive from this split is we learned a lot about ourselves like we learned a lot about what what might be the correct culture to, for these guys to operate in um how how sniper and our bot lane the best way for them to learn and progress um, there's still obviously a lot of room to, to go there, but um, those lessons were so valuable. And for, for us to be able to succeed and make it so far in playoffs whilst getting that playoff experience, like like Grayson mentioned, was like such an amazing experience for, for our guys um, and for, for me as a coach as well. Because this is like, this is the most different dynamic group that I've ever coached. Like, um, most of the other rosters I've coached in LCS were like kind of similar, but you had noticeably better individual players. This roster is like personality-wise and 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 uh, understanding of the game was so much different. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever had so much joy coaching a roster. Like I've never felt so valuable as a coach as well. So um, it was just an amazing experience. Yeah, I mean that's always like a dope feeling as a coach. It's like. I feel like for players, you can like kind of watch them play and the community will be like, oh, this player's good or this player's bad. And then for coaches, it's like you never really get recognition. It's like even if you do well, it's because the players are playing well. If you do poorly, then you like drafted poorly or like not doing a good job. Yeah. Um, so for you guys, like just like seeing the players like floors like rise so quickly because you said the baseline was so, you know, low when we started. I think that's like a testament to how much work you guys have done. So Kudos to you guys, obviously. Wait, I can't in. I don't mean only toot my own horn. I, I feel like I, I want to say as well. Um, our younger guys were so good at absorbing and like uh, learning from each other as well. Like I remember when we had Sniper the first two weeks, he got so much feedback and like everything that was given to him, he really took in stride. And honestly, like getting a pro player with 
that kind of personality was so refreshing because because generally there is a bit of like a ego battle like if, if we're yeah, just being honest for sure. like even myself as Grayson as players we we had a lot of ego as well so you end up having a lot of like just battles to get to one conclusion but with yeah. someone like Sniper it's like it felt so efficient like he was just an an information absorbing machine yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, our guys' personalities made this experience so much easier for for coaches as well. I feel yeah, like, 100%. I mean, in like ten years of being in the league scene, I've never seen one person just tank so much feedback yeah. <laughs> over and over, and like yeah. kind of with still like a smile on his face. So like, real kudos to Sniper because it was relentless. Like there would also just be games where like, <clears throat> let's say like River entered a scrim or someone else entered a scrim, and like we would still like sometimes I would just immediately go give Sniper feedback. And he, he he would just, you know, be able to take it and try where other players sometimes are like, yeah, I could have played better, but this fucking guy is why we lost the game, yeah. you know, obviously. Um, That's a classic. And I think that Sniper has done a really good job of absorbing that. And I think, you know, Meech and Ayla also gained a lot of synergy over the time. I think Bill uh, gave, like, Meech a lot of feedback, like, almost after every review. He's always reviewing lane phase with Meech and... Um, I think our players also did a good job of coaching each other as well. Quid and Sniper worked together. River and Sniper worked together. I think kind of like everyone worked with the, the top side all worked with Sniper and helped him improve. And like, you know, before games on stage, Quid would 1v1 Sniper a matchup or like Quid and River would 2v2 our ball lane for a matchup. Yeah. So I, I think mean, we're, we're still not even sure who the best 1v1ers are right now. It's like this is a toss up between Quid, River, and Sniper for the 1v1 Kings. Well, like Meech, the Meech won the 1v1 oh, tournament true, true, true. we did. Maybe Meech is the good. Yeah. yeah. And I do think, I do think Quid and River, if they were a bot lane in the LCS right now, like they actually might. They might, yeah. be, they might be one of the best. No, they're I, they're I think actually scary ball lane. River might actually be, be a support player like in, in, in hiding, you know. But River also hates jungling. Like I don't yeah, know, exactly. I don't know if the public knows this. River genuinely hates the jungle role with a passion. Like yeah. he would rather play any other role in the game. But I think he just understands that he's a really fucking good jungler. So he's just like, fuck, I'll just jungle. But like <laughs> he hates the jungle role. Yeah, it's a nice problem to have. Yeah. Yeah. But also like um, oh, you're saying Grayson as well. I see I think something that wasn't like public at all was we had a f kind of like a funny dynamic between we had this like river was like a father figure quid was like sniper's older brother and the sniper was the younger brother and there was this funny like little family internal family dynamic between those three where yeah. it's like the like river would just get grumpy sometimes and he would just <laughs> go quiet and then that's when like quid as the older brother would step in and like be trying to fix like sniper's mindset and there was just such a funny like uh dynamic between those three so yeah I uh, I was showing the day of our last match, actually, day of playoffs. I was showing um, Sniper the Gara and Rock Lee fight. You don't know anime or not? Uh, you showed I saw. Yeah, the, I showed him I saw as well. Clip, yeah. But basically, for the fans watching, like a really good analogy is a lot of time River feels like Gara and Sniper's like Rock Lee, and because River's got this like almost like dark energy about him that yeah. he's just like. I don't know. He's very powerful. He's very strong in the game. And he's like, he doesn't say that much. Um, and Sniper's just the exact opposite. Just very um uplifting. Yeah, he's got he's like, definitely go got him. he's got main character, like yeah. main character energy sniper for sure. Like, yeah. But like those two, it, it was just really funny finding that comparison because I think that's also another good like analogy for their personalities. Yeah. Agreed. Uh so uh just like your point about um like the floor being really low and like these guys having like really interesting dynamics from what it sounds like. Uh, obviously this year in LCS was like a huge change in the league and a lot of teams went through like a lot of different rebuilds, right? Um, so I guess like we did like an AMA earlier this year talking about like what our goals for our rebuild was. Like what do you guys really think differentiates like why um, our like iteration was like so successful coming off the first split? Especially with like how low our baseline was. Um, and then I guess you guys should probably address the scrim fraud allegations that like the community has been talking about for like weeks now. So yeah, let's like dive into that. Yeah, I guess to start the um, talking about like why our rebuild, I guess was so successful. I think that, I think that our core like of quid and River, I guess they're kind of the more experienced players on our team. Uh, I think they were just 
performing at a really high level in the regular season. And they're also they have like good personalities for fostering the talent of the other players. And I think we also just picked our players very carefully. And there's also, you know, an element to luck of like I think there was um like a lot of times where our scrims, we wouldn't be performing well in scrims. We could literally lose 15 in a row and then we could just show up on stage and win. And it's like not every team can do that. I think our personalities that we have in our players and they're just like actually they just show up on stage. And I think the fact that we don't have that many, we don't have that much like nerves issues. Like Quid overcame yeah. a lot of like the stage nerves that he had earlier uh, this year. So I, it's kind of hard to pinpoint like one thing. I think... To call us like fraudulent in scrums just because we're performing well on stage is kind of weird. Like, definitely, we're not that good in scrums, but we're learning a lot. <laughs> we're learning a lot in scrims. So it's kind of like, even though we're losing, I feel like we take those losings from scrims, we apply it to stage, and then when we're at 100% energy, we're able to perform. So uh, just because we're just because you're scrim enter doesn't mean you don't play well on stage, I guess. So, I mean, flip side of the question then, like, Obviously, people are going to look at like your scrim results and being like, oh, is your process good? So for a team like Immortals that apparently was winning a lot of their scrims, um, is it possible that like we're just getting more out of practice than they are, even though like they're winning everything? Um, definitely. I feel like like we can't like release it publicly, but if you're a fly on the wall in our scrim rooms, um, I feel like there's so many takeaways from every game, like on an individual level and a team level. And part of that is because our base, our baseline is so low. It's like, we don't understand really simple concepts where if you talk to another pro player, like they would already know that, or, or at least not all of our roster knew. So it was like every single game, there was something to take away, even if it was like a simple, a simple thing. And I think, I think we did a good job of that. I really feel like we got what was important from a lot of, most of our scrims. Um, and I felt like our preparation, particularly in the regular season, was really good. Um, I think we, in the postseason, we had some issues with like, I think we kind of ran into some like champion pool issues and uh, we ran into a bit of problem with like the pressure of, of the, the stage. But um, in terms of like your initial question of like why our rebuild is so good, I feel like my personal opinion is that we have players with raw skill that are able to show their raw skill under pressure. I don't think... I yeah. think a lot. Some of the time, you get like, you like get this this really good player who you know is good, and then they just shut down. But with our guys, like especially Sniper and and Quid coming into this season, obviously, when the pressure happened, they were still able to show their personality within the game. They didn't just become like an NPC who's just AFK wait and like a passenger waiting for their teammate to do something. Yeah. Um, and I think I think I would credit a big part of that to River as well. Like he was the the obvious team leader. Like he was the only one who could really be a leader with our team from the get go. Um, and he's he's like mindset towards team play is like you've got to be aggressive. Like you've got to fight. You have to be willing to make plays. Um, and I really feel I really feel like that uh, frees up the younger guys to perform. And I th I think that's why short term we had such good results. And not to say, I, I think there's so much we still need to work on um, just across the board, but having that kind of freedom as a player is so important to me. So, Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I think we really prioritize making the players feel like as stress-free and allow them to do, like allow them to take risks on stage. That's kind of been our messaging the whole year. Um, and I think they really took it to heart and they really played. And I do agree, like the rookie coming up who's done well in Academy or done well in scrims, but then can't play on stage is like the most common trope. It happened to me for a long time. Uh, I wasn't able to play very well on stage, even though I was doing well in scrims. And I think that like Meech as well, like showed up on, like I kind of knew it from working with him on DSG, but like all of our rookies didn't really have the problem of showing up on stage, which is. Just a real coin flip. You never know who's going to be able to do that or not be able to do that. Because uh, playing in front of, you know, tens of thousands of people, hundreds of thousands of people online versus playing in front of, like, there's 20 people in a lobby, coaches and stuff, it's, like, so different. So Actually, yeah. I think that's a really good point. Um, I, obviously, I think, like, Quid had, like, an outstanding split this split. Um, and I don't know if you guys, like, remember, like, the public sentiment about Quid in summer of last year, but... Even me, like I literally went on a podcast and said, like, if you're only watching a stage of games, yeah, like he probably shouldn't play in the LCS again. Like I said that yeah. publicly, um, but he was so good in practice. So, you know, 
he went from like a middling bottom tier player in summer to probably like a contender for like MVP and like probably like a top mid laner of the split. So I guess like how much conviction do you guys have when it comes to like just running into players that like might choke on stage? Is that something that you guys think is like a problem that's fixable? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd like to like comment on the quid one because I think that's interesting. Um, was it the first? I think it was first. We started one three, right? And I don't think Quid had the best performance. Um, it was like one or two weeks, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, that to me was kind of shocking. Like the first two weeks where he was playing badly on stage, I remember we were. I was watching all the scrims, and I was like, I said to Grayson, I was like, "Is Quid this like normally this good?" Like. Like every scrim, he was just like completely murdering one v one. The whole first month, of scrim. yeah. Like, the whole like, first month, it was actually disgusting. It, how it, bad it looked he was gapping unfair. People. Like it looked unfair. It looked like he was the best mid by far. <laughs> and I was like, "Is this normal?" Like I, I, I can't understand why we didn't see this last split. And then the first two weeks of LCS, he really shut down. I, I think we picked him a couple of like champions that he wasn't super comfortable with. Um, and he like stopped speaking. He was not winning lane like he, how he would win lane in scrims. He wasn't going for anything in the game, and he was just a passenger who did nothing. And then the game ended. And I was like, okay, like so obviously like this was kind of the issue last split. And I remember we talked to Quid a lot, and we were talking like internally to each other a lot about like guys like what do we have to do to like uncrack this this egg, you know. Um, and I, we, we talked to Quid about, and I don't really, I wouldn't credit it to anyone in particular. If anything, I would just give it to Quid himself. Like, he recognized it was a problem. We talked about it. We really tried to give him confidence going into like LCS weeks. And then I feel like he came to this like light bulb moment where he was like, why am I putting so much pressure on myself? Like, like it's completely understandable that you would put that much pressure on yourself, right? When you're going on LCS, but like, it doesn't help you, right? So you just have to like come to this this realization that you're playing the game that you've played like ten thousand times within your life, and that you're a good player, and you should just like you just have to go and play the game and not care about like what other people think, what yeah. the result's gonna be. Um, and I, I swear, I remember he he even said before going into week three, he's like, "I'm just like I'm just gonna play," and then he just smurfed from then on out. Like he it was like he just transformed within within one day. Yeah, um, Squidward. It was yeah. really like a metamorphosis. Like yeah, he became was. a butterfly. He, he was a little. No, I, I do agree. Like it's very interesting how it happened because we did address it early on because we knew it was a potential problem. Like I could tell from watching him last year, seeing how good he's in scrims. Like I've seen this archetype before, and I feel like we had the conversations. I remember we're going on walks and we had. I had a conversation with him about like, "Hey, do you normally get nervous on stage? Like, how do you normally feel when you're up there?" and I can't tell if it was anything we said that like slowly started implanting the seed and then he just like one day literally just got it or if he just read something online in an article and was just like, oh, I'm fucking unleashed now. Like it actually was <laughs> wild how it literally was just it was just a one day thing. It was like he came in that 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 Saturday morning. And he was just like, oh, don't worry, Grayson. Like I got it. Like my mindset's fixed now. I'm like, oh. Well, I mean, when I heard it, I was just like, we'll see. Like, I want to, yeah, like, yeah. Like, 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 we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how he played today. But he was, he was fucking unleashed and unlocked. And it's just like, to one, to like be aware of that. He's just like, okay, yeah, I've like fixed my mindset before he even played. To me, I was, that was pretty crazy that he just was, was able to make it over time. And it was really like, that was super personally satisfying for me because I think as a coach, like, for me, my biggest goal is to like let players just be the best version of themselves and to like watch Quid go from like, we know he's really good, we know he can play really well in practice and I know he can play well on stage, but can he do it consistently? And then just kind of hit this like turning point where it just felt like after this point, uh, you know, he was just playing great every game. And it's just, yeah, it was super satisfying to see because that's kind of my whole um aspirations as a coach is just kind of like unlock and unleash players and even if it's hard to assign any kind of um responsibility to what what caused it obviously i would give a lot to him because you he's the one who has to go through it um but it's just awesome to fucking see that yeah i mean yeah it's uh it's funny because <laughs> i i sent it to the discord lcs group recently um but like he used to be on a team with pace um, and Pays is obviously like one of the most loved AD carries in LCK. Yeah, he, was, he was the second best carry on Genji Academy. <laughs> and they were running amok in Genji Gen Academy. And I think 
something that I've recognized this year um, is we've gone through a lot of different roster iterations here at 100 Thieves, and this was like our first like true, you know, rebuild with like developmental players. Um, but the community like really, really like vibes with this roster. It might be one of the most popular like rosters around right now. So um, just like kind of going away from the performance aspect, it's like, why do you guys think the fans like love our players so much? First of all, I want to say they actually genuinely, this team is very like lovable. Like just even from the inside, like I feel like Quid and Sniper's energy is like two of my favorite energy from players that I've ever worked with. Like, I, I still remember when like I think we lost like we lost 15 games in a row or whatever and by game 13 Quid just like screamed he, he just but he, he wasn't screaming at anyone he just lets out, he lets out like these roars and it's so funny <laughs> yeah. and it kind of just like it like breaks the like tension within the room and then like later on that night he wrote guys like don't give up like we're gonna be we're gonna be good and th this is from a young guy you know who's like playing the best on our team and also leading um, and the sniper's obviously got that super bubbly, like super bubbly energy. Um, Meech, Meech is a funny guy. Like we call him the the contrarian in the team. He's he just is like, a contrarian. No matter what anyone says, Meech will say like he'll argue the opposite thing. Like we have this hilarious team dynamic, and like all our players are super likable. They all just want to win. They're all working really hard. Um, so obviously that helps get the community perception out. As as much as we, I mean, you can't obviously come at, like make that all public, but. Um, I think just their natural personalities are just so likable, and I think ha having an underdog story naturally, like people are gonna more cling on to that. Like we had the same kind of thing at Golden Guardians last year, where it's like everyone just thought we were bad. We played well. Everyone loved us. Everyone loved lyric licorice, Jay's smile, like that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I just think it's like the underdog story combined with like uh, I think I think there has been a lot of positivity in NA not just this year but in the past of like raising rookies and teams haven't tended to like actually commit to that um there have been like cases here and there where like uh what's it called eg with like danny and jojo for example but um when you commit to that i think people are obviously really like that so I, I think it's just like a trifecta of, of positive things that really draws people to our team so yeah i kind of agree i mean it's kind of hard I feel like when yeah when you're on the dogs you have rookies and the rookies are already playing well they're also doing a great job of showing off their personality on stage like sniper I just love the sniper like Fortnite dancing on like oh dude those the are opponents so good. and like doing the jawline and stuff like just hilarious I think one funny thing that the no one really got to find out but I think it was who who was the verse was the verse fly oh the biceps. yeah that's our fly quest no, uh, C nine. Right? C9? C9, yeah. C9, C9 in yeah. playoffs. Yeah. He, he sharpie like top gap on his bicep, and his plan was like to flex it after he solo kills. And then we also got him, we told him to write jungle gap on his other bicep. So, like, he if he dies the game, <laughs> then he just flexes jungle gap. Uh, we got shit on. <laughs> so, we, no one saw any of the yeah, Why didn't he pull the jungle gap out? Like, yeah, after, after no. he got back. Yeah. Just wasn't the right taste when you're getting doo dooed <laughs> on that bad. But, um, yeah, they do a great job of showing. And also, our games are just pretty fun to watch. Because we have like, uh, like we have pretty bad early games. I think a lot of it is still like learning our rookies, learning how to like consistently, consistently play well in lane phase, and like know what your base timers are, know all this like strategical uh, st items. But our team fight and our raw mechanics are really high, so we can be down gold and we'll still be like contending for the game. Um, and I think that's that just makes them, our games pretty exciting to watch as well. Yeah, I think on top of that, like. I think obviously a big learning lesson for Grayson and myself is that like the stuff we've talked about or like the positives that are shown this year, I think a big part of that was because we had such like a natural environment. It was almost like primal where like people felt like they could perform like how they wanted to perform. But there's like two two sides to the coin. Like I think we were a little too primal um, and I think we have to shore up like refine. Uh, obviously, like I think we can be more disciplined like all, 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 all the obvious things you have within the team, we're, we're kind of showing off, especially around playoffs, um, which is why I mentioned earlier, like, I think we learned a lot this split. I wouldn't have changed anything because I, I think part of the reason our players were able to express themselves so much on the stage was because of our environment. But I do think we have to shore up some of those weaknesses going into next split. Um, but yeah, I, I think I, I'm just really happy with like, oh, I guess as well, like on Grayson's points, um, the way Sniper is on stage, I think some people will be like, is this guy just doing this for a show? But like, that's just how he is. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. That's just how he is as a person. Like, 
from behind the scenes, he's he's just like this like he just loves life. I feel like the rest of us in the <laughs> esports scene are, are so like we're so like trampled down by like all the negative feedback in the community and we're like yeah. trying to find success and we're just like, oh, we're so sad. And then this kid is just like, he's just loving everything that's happening, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah, that type of a uh, attitude is like really viral too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so refreshing. Yeah. So I guess like when it comes to like the new guard, uh, Grayson, I mean, you talked a little bit about expectations. Like honestly, just like working in corporate for pretty long, it's like, under promising and over delivering is like the motto. Yeah. So that was definitely the case for us in spring. And, you know, you guys finished second in uh, regular season, top four finish in playoffs, and you guys had like four all pros, right? Um, and potentially an MVP candidate. So, um, how should our expectations be adjusted going to summer split? Is like, are we still like a long term two year developmental roster? Um, because like we're on, we're like two wins away from being top three, which would put us into a world seating. So should fans now expect that from you guys in summer split? Um, is it still up in the air? Like, wh what do you guys kind of think? Like, our expectations should be? Yeah, I mean, I do think that there's a lot to be excited for for next split. Um, it's kind of hard to say like what you should expect from us. Besides the fact that I do think we still have a lot to learn, I think. You know, what we're really shooting for, obviously, is like Worlds, going to Worlds. I think top three would be like a major goal for us and a, an awesome thing to hit to be able to get that international experience for these young guys. Um, so I feel like internally, like that's kind of where my eyes are going to be at, you know, what I'll be looking to. And I think to do that, you know, there's just a lot of a lot of elements of the game that we need to work on, like champion pool issues, mid game issues, like consistency in lane phase. Um that I think right now we we finished fourth and considering like our form and playoffs, I think I would put us at around fourth. I think that was about like accurate where we landed at the end. And so I guess the main focus is just try, try to improve and try to be able to obviously continue, but also make better our process. And I kind of agree with what Sam ha said earlier is like, I don't really have, I don't really have any regrets with how the season goes. I do think there are some learnings and some things we can improve on for next year. Or next split, sorry. Um, and I guess my eyes are really just thinking, or my eyes are like focused on the Korea boot camp we're about to do and like how to get the most out of that. And I think, you know, right after we lost, you know, Quid was saying it a lot. And I, I agree with what he was saying is that like this whole split, so much of our feedback was focused on lane phase because a lot of times we couldn't make it to mid game uh, <laughs> and a stable enough point to like really improve our mid game. And I think specifically in our Team Liquid series, like our lane phases, we weren't losing from lane phase. Um, <clears throat> we were losing more from like the team aspect and the team game. And hopefully this career bootcamp can also level up our lane phases so we can focus more on just team concepts is what I'm expecting kind of in general for next split. Yeah. Um, the competitor in me is like, I always feel like I find myself in the the middle of the split where like I'm like we should just win it all. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> it's like you you end you kind yeah. of like you go into the start of a split and your natural inclination, especially the start of the split, I was like, fuck, like we just need to like become a team. Like that that was literally my thought at the start of the split. I didn't have any expectations on results. And then you we get like halfway through the split and you realize that every team's beatable and like if we can get our shit together, we can win the whole thing. And you're just like, we should just win, you know? Um yeah. and I feel like no matter what I say now, I'm still going to have that same feeling going into the next split. I'm, we're just going to be focusing on winning. Yeah. You, never, you never like set an expectation of like fourth and you're like, oh, we're first. So now we can throw a couple of games where we're going to be fourth. Like, it's <laughs> fine. Yeah. You know, um, I think for fans, like what, what we're really trying to do here is like we do want to make a championship team um, and we do still have a long way to go. Like you can see it shades of it, especially in the C9 and TL series where it's like sometimes we just get lost and in order to be a championship team you can't get lost like everyone needs to know their job at all points of the game based on the champion they're playing like how our team comp like operates and the way league is with so many champions you're in a different situation every game and so a lot of the time we get lost more than we should um so yeah as Grayson's saying like we just need to we need to keep working on our systems we need to make sure that like our I have no I have no concern about like our individual skill. We just need to get like our, our systems in place. We need to work on our team game. Um and we need to be a lot more consistent. 
And I think if we can show that we can consistently close games with an even or, or, or a gold lead, I think we can be a championship team. And, and that, that will be kind of like moving more in that direction should be our expectation, regardless of like a results placing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, like the easy answer is always just like, yeah, we're, we're going to we're gonna do our best to win, personally improve. Um, but I think from an expectation standpoint, like fans will always have like, oh, are they like, are they trying to make playoffs? Are they like trying to go to world? So uh, it sounds like there's a little bit more reassurance after the first split that like worlds is definitely a possibility, if not like the ability to like go further than that in the future. So that, that's awesome to hear. Um, last thing I wanted to touch on, because you guys are talking about champion pool problems, but like we picked Shaco in the LCS yeah. and that was like obviously a banger. So like you guys say champion pool issues, but I think we have like, one of the, like the most unique um, champion picks in the league. So, like, how, how does that how does that make sense? You know, I was like, give, give like dive into that. that one champion. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I think our overall team culture allows for a lot of like we 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 allow for a lot of like random picks in our practice, a lot of experimental things, stuff that would kind of caught, catch our opponents off guard. Um, and I also think River has this like mindset where it's like. Whenever he's playing a new champion, he's like trying really hard. And obviously, we're trying hard every game, but it's like his brain just like unlocks and it's just like thinking about everything, communicating everything. He just like really wants to win. So we had picked like River a lot of different champions and scrims. And uh, you know, part of the thought process of the Shaco Vegar, right? It's like Vegar is gonna get pushed in because he's not very strong laner, and then Shaco can like relieve pressure. In our game, Shaco ended up invading and dying level two. So we yeah, he, really, he drew pressure. He drew pressure. He, drew, he made uh, them he collapse. Made them it actually it. was not bad for mid. <laughs> um. <laughs> that was probably the like, most like funny sequence of events. It's like it was like actually a game for first place, and the broadcast was like, "Oh, I guess they're just like running it down on per like purpose for seeding." And then you watch the game, and then like he's just invading level two, like giving handing double buffs, and you're like, "Wow, hundred thieves is yeah. like are they throwing intentionally?" So yeah, no, I, I think. I actually feel like that game showcases exactly what Grayson's talking about, where you see, you see the positives and negatives of like being kind of experimental. I also feel like the way the format works now is like you kind of need to be a little bit experimental. We're playing a live patch. We can't just like copy paste LCK LPL the whole year. Yeah. Um, Vagar is a pick that no other team played, I believe, that only we played no. that was like probably our most successful pick. Yeah. So there's like a highlighting a positive, like, okay, like we're more willing to play other champions than other teams. Uh, the Shaker, the Shaker was pretty useless. Like, <laughs> if we're being honest about that, I was like, yeah, yeah. I don't think he did anything in that game. Um, but I will say River has kind of like, he's kind of earned the right to play those types of champions. Like he's earned our respects fully and completely. And if, if he really believes something is strong, we'll put full trust in him. I feel like trust is a really important um, part of our, our team culture. It's like we have to be able to trust each other to do certain things. Um, sometimes those things aren't going to work out. Um, but yeah, I, I just think it's important that we're able to be a little bit experimental. I think some NA teams, particularly in the past, have just fallen into the trap of like, uh, like we have to play the same comp every game. And like, like no offense, but I do think of like 100 Thieves last year where it was like, I remember they only played as Yavaris like almost every game and it's like hmm, i wonder what they're gonna draft this game guys like well i mean we <laughs> we won a lot of games in a row yeah i mean you guys won some games you, you, <laughs> you did fine but you, i mean <laughs> no no, no. My, my point is it can be good and sometimes it can be bad um it's just about like you have to figure out fast you don't get much time like you have to figure out fast what you think is good or bad we weren't trolling we actually genuinely thought that shaco was a good pick yeah. it was not good it was useless <laughs> but uh you know sometimes you just got to take risks so that's yeah. all I got. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, so are we going to be seeing more experimental picks in the summer? Because like, as like a viewer, it's just, it's so amazing to see. But I'm like sitting in the back room and like, are my coaches like intentionally trolling me? Like, I was like, what the hell is no, this? So here, here's the thing. It's like, I'm always, I'm very pro just sending it. Let's just try it. See how it goes. Um, you can always learn something that way. But it has to come from the player. I'm not like whispering in Rivers ear like, pick shit. Like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, that player has to, like, think it's good and believe it's good and, and like, have some kind of strategy or methodology behind it. 
Um, yeah, I think that's really important because it's it, the experimenting is also coming from the players, and I think me and Sam are like pretty open to letting them experiment. But you can't just like force it to happen. It has to be yeah. kind of like natural. Also, if if the players don't understand why it's good, then they're probably just gonna run it down, you know, because yeah. they're not gonna understand like why this champion functions like in a certain game. I think back to like the story Ayla was telling me about, e.g., their orcs gone, so now I can like, <laughs> um, where his his coaches were like, you have to play Janna, like Janna is like the best <laughs> champion ever, and then they played it on stage. They just got dove like three times in a row, and the game was over fifteen minutes. Um, that's one of those moments where you, yeah, as Grayson is saying, you really need your player to understand why picks are good. I was right, they're just gonna pick the champ, and like probably nothing good's gonna happen, right? So, so yeah. when the community is like, oh. Uh, NA players are never like picking up new champion pools and they're just copying uh, like the Asian regions. Do you think that's like a coaching problem or like a players just like have bad champion pools? It's a bit of both. Like you can't really tell from the outside because maybe the players are saying they want to try something new, but the coaches don't allow it. Uh, I could, I think for other teams, it's it's a bit of both. I just think now that we're faster than the the Asian teams, it's like you need to change your mindset a little bit, especially as a player and a coach or just like, be willing to try things and be willing to like trust your own intuition and not just copy paste like whatever LCK is doing. I also I, I do think generally what tends to happen is like the top teams like the C9s, TLs, that kind of thing. There's a lot of pressure on them to win, and so it's like you can't really afford to take risks in draft, mm. or it's like because you know like you've got someone breathing down your neck, where or it's like if you pick something weird like Shaco and it doesn't work, like. How's that going to look to the people above that are like, you have to win? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. But uh, we have a bit more freedom on 100 yeah. Thieves. And it, and it does tend to have like a trickle down effect as well, where it's like the best teams are only playing Varus, Senna, la, la, la. So then the teams underneath them are going to copy them, right? Like it's just like, it's like a cyclical thing that happens and no one tends to break it. That's why I do think it is important to have teams like ours who are willing to kind of break that cycle. Um, but yeah, that, that's kind of like the cause and effect of, of what happens. Okay. So obviously, like our team did very well. Um, like you guys have both bo like been both to Korea, right? In the in the boot camp. Yeah. Um, multiple, so multiple multiple times. Yeah, <laughs> many times. I mean, for uh, you know, this is gonna be like a pretty fun experience. But um, what do you guys think? Like the benefits of like boot camping in Korea are for like a young team like this. Yeah, I mean, my first thing is like what your approaches some guys just go for like the individual like the solo queue is like obviously the best in the world i do think the solo queue in korea right now river was mentioning there's like a lot of problems like the the pro plays get ddos therefore yeah, yeah. everyone's game is ruined i'm not sure about that but um generally like the solo queue practice is really efficient for multiple reasons number one is queue times are really fast mm -hmm. ping is really low the volume of good players is much higher so you like if you spend let's say you spend eight hours playing Korean solo queue, you're going to get in probably three or four more games. They're going to be higher quality and you're going to be playing on low ping. Yeah. So you can naturally, you're getting like what, a 30, 40% better practice than if you did eight hours in NA where you're probably just going to lose your mind. <clears throat> you're going to be stuck in queue. You're playing on 60 ping, right? So like already your individual practice is better. Um, if you're going there for practice, the scrim quality is probably going to be a bit better um, generally. Although I, I will say NA scrim quality has been pretty decent this split, at least from our perspective. Like maybe not all the teams screwing us, like you know what I mean. Um, but I, I I just I think the main thing is overall the efficiency of practice is just so much higher. And also like there's there's a lot of like like small things that actually help that you wouldn't think of. Whereas like it's much easier to just go get food as a team. Like it's much easier to just go hang out as a team in Korea. I feel like there's like it's cheaper and there's more stuff close by. Like in NA, you kind of have to always order food. There's all these like little like tidbits that help you bring come closer as a team and also get better practice. Yeah. Um, and that, which is why like teams just always or individuals always end up just going to Korea. It's just it's kind of like a League of Legends haven, you know. Um, it's the mecca. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's the mecca. It's like the god server, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with everything that Sam said. Um, logistically, just the game, everything about it's better. The games, the pings, the speed of the games. Um, obviously, I hope this DDoSing issue is, is a, been a big issue, and hopefully it gets fixed by the time we go, because that would suck. Um, but I think there's also just a huge element to 
having everyone in a new environment and especially in like a, a foreign like land and space you're just kind of like forced to connect only with each other you don't have like your friends or family you you know you need to go out with your manager who could speak korean to go get food um you're kind of like trapped to, Thank to you, just, Joseph. Yeah. Yeah, just play <laughs> just play league and it's just a really cool experience to be like in a totally foreign place so you're not not used to, obviously not foreign for a river and quid because they are from Korea. Only half our team. But yeah, yeah only, only half our team will have that element. But <clears throat> just finding yourself in a new environment outside of the normal, I guess, like life conditions that you're that you're used to, um, it also just changes your mindset and how you feel about every day and like what your purpose and goal is. Because it feels so purposeful when you're traveling across the world to practice a video game. You're like, oh, I, I got to get the most out of this. You know, I just spent... 14 hours on a flight like time to do this thing and then you load into the games the gameplay just feels different because of the increased skill of the enemy players plus the ping being lower um there's just so much so i have so many good memories of all the times i've gone to korea so it, it is like a, a ride of passage almost for like uh a league player for the fans do you guys want to tell this story about snipers like boot camp uh solo boot camp in korea before the split started I just think that story is like so. Funny. What aspect of it? I don't. Uh, do you guys remember like the uh, him being hard stuck in diamond? Oh, oh yeah. you guys, you guys need to tell oh, the fans that one. Yeah, I mean that that's kind of your story, Joseph. But like, yeah, when 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 Sniper, Meech, and Ayla all went to Korea, started grinding. Uh, it was almost slightly concerning from the beginning because like you just see Ayla just like phew, like off to the moon, like he was like six hundred LP within like a few days. And then we checked Meech and Sniper's account, and like Meech was like barely master, and Sniper was like D2, right? He was hard stuck diamond. Yeah, and then he went to Joseph, and he was like, "Joe, like I th I needed an account reset. <laughs> like the they're they're target inting me because my name's a hundred Sniper, but in reality, that. like n no one in Korea knows who hundred Sniper is. Yeah, uh, he just had this massive cope. <laughs> no Sniper he was coping so hard. And dude, and then like the. Even like ties into like the first day he came in. Well, remember that? Like, what did he say? Yeah, he yeah. No, the, <laughs> oh my god! Uh, so I've had the funniest like come out in like our team like ever. Like, yeah, it, it, he did some really shocking things. Like, Wait, can, tell us about the coffee policy. Yeah, yeah, I mean, basically, um, the very first uh, meeting we have with everyone on the team on on video call. Um, Sniper was. I don't remember how late. How was he? He was. Like, was it was it thirty it, minutes. Yeah, late, like a long time. Like, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, I think it was maybe like 30 minutes late. I don't, I don't know. It was quite late. And I was like, hey, Sniper, like, this isn't a great way to, like, introduce yourself to everyone. And we're going to have this policy. If you're late, you're going to buy everyone coffee. It's, like, pretty basic. Just a slight, you know, slap on the wrist so you hopefully feel more incentivized to show up on time. And he said something along the like, he's like, uh, we'll see about that. <laughs> or <something like> that. <laughs> and I was like, uh, no, Sniper, we won't see about that. You'll order us just coffee. We're gonna, like... Dude, I remember I was just shocked. Like, it was yeah, like the yeah. first day. I did not expect yeah. him to say something like that. And I will <laughs> I'll say, in hindsight, suffice to say, like, he basically invested, like, all of his income in the team, <laughs> team coffee. Cause, he like, bought us a lot of coffee. He showed up late a lot. <laughs> like, and the funny thing was, we, we'd be in some days where, like, Meech or Ayla saw him awake, like, 20 minutes like earlier than they were and they were like yeah he was just in the shower for like 30 minutes like yeah. it, and then the thing was he would he would very like complain a lot about having to buy everyone coffee and we're just like just don't just don't be late yeah just, show just don't be late it's <laughs> like you'll be fine yeah. he'd also just like barely be late too he'd be late by like a few minutes we already gave him like a two minute window but then he'd be like five minutes yeah um it wasn't to the point where it like would cause us any problems honestly I think most of the guys were hoping he was like three minutes late. River so, especially. Yeah. He's like every day. He's like, who's going to be late? Free coffee. The, the dad. <laughs> the dad in the relationship. Yeah. Um, but that was, uh, that was a funny experience. I will say River and Quid were never late. Ever. I wow. don't think they were late once this split. Quid was late once. He was? He was late once. At the very beginning, his like alarm didn't go off. And, oh. But we gave everyone one like uh, get out of jail free card because it happens, you know? Yeah. Quid never had to pay. Yeah. Quid and nice. River. Yeah. Good Smart. guys. Good workers. Smart. Um, that just reminded me one one thing is that like I feel like when we go to Korea, I don't play really any league anymore. But I think I will grind just to be like on Sniper's tail. I want him to feel the heat. That way, if me and Sam, me or Sam is like higher ranked than any of our players, uh, we're definitely gonna 
Let them know. We're, they're going to they, be aware. The thing is, they get the they get the pro player accounts. We get the like the bronze. Oh, yes. oh do we? Yeah. You, you have. Well, to, no, like, Grace and you would get the pro. Account. Oh, I'm a, I'm a sub. Yeah. So I just get the bronzy account. Yeah. Honestly, like I thrive down there. I'm the, <laughs> I'm the king of bronze in Korea. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna force my players to do it with me. <laughs> actually, yeah, they actually will probably. They'll carry. I mean, there's six players. You know, everyone. Needs, we, everyone needs a dual partner. Should we give like an incentive for whoever has like the highest rank? Yeah, we should. I'm but done. Business class flight back to the US. Oh, hey, I'm I mean, going for that. Joe just said that on it, but hey, you have to give me a pro player account. All right? it's like, it's, it's I thought you drive down there, dude. It's on balance. Uh, actually, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I'll catch up. I mean, that'd be a. Actually, I've never. No one's done that, but I think that's actually a genius idea. Yeah. Business class flight back. But the problem is, like, River and Quid will just win, like, guaranteed, right? Well, and they have to start on the new accounts, too. If, like, they could use they're, it. They're going to win. Okay, like, Quid, I promise you, will I, win. I do I, think I, Quid I, will win. But it doesn't matter. Like, I, I, I think it, it will make them try. It yeah, will make everyone them try. will try their yeah. ass off. I remember yeah. when we got, we made. I mean, we made semifinals at Worlds, and Jack paid for all of us to get business class back. That was um, S tier experience. Yeah, Quid will win though. Mark Does it words. apply to me? Does it apply to me? I, if you well, as long as like Grayson, it, let's be honest. Like, I'm doing it. Let's be honest. I've seen some. No, of your, I just need I've to know. I just need to know. I, just, I mean, did you see? I'm gonna put in the work. I'm gonna put in the work. Do you see your statistics as a player versus a coach? They had that. No, on they cherry pick those so hard. No, they, it, you, maybe you sh you're better off the riff than you are on the riff. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll make quid play on my account. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if Cut we make edit, worlds, edit uh, I can ask Matt if he can get us business class flights to uh, London because, like, that's that's where worlds is this year. Yeah, oh, so that's, that's, a, that's a good motivator. It's a good incentive. It's good I, incentive. If Matt is Matt seeing this, maybe he'll comp us. So I've uh, I've never flown business class before, so that would be quite the experience. All right, well, oh, coach is not included. Oh, well, that, that's that the standard, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think that sums it up, guys. Like, we just need to make worlds, and Sam gets on his first business class flight, and all the fans are happy. Well, generally, when you win. It means something good has happened, you know. So like winning winning's ideal. Yeah. Yeah. Typically. All right. Well, I think that like pretty much uh sums up everything from start to finish. I don't know if you guys have anything you guys want to talk about. Um, I think the last thing for me is like I think we talked earlier about like there's been so much positive feedback from the community. I re I really genuinely believe it and like people just I feel like it's easy to say is like this is just the right thing to say and meet in front of media, but like gen genuinely when our players get all that positive feedback, like people come to the meet and greets, there's positive feedback on Reddit, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. It really helps our guys like work harder, um, and not just not just saying that because we have to. Like uh, all the support we've gotten this split has been overwhelming, and like it just makes our job so much easier. So we appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely second that. I, I just hope that everyone realizes that we still have a lot to learn, and there's no like knee jerk reactions when we lose a couple games in summer. Um, I think we all really believe in the the growth of this roster, and it's been awesome to see the community like support these guys. I've, I've really never seen the community rally around like a new group of guys this fast. So, um, yeah, we really appreciate it, and they they really do appreciate it as well. Yeah, I mean, guys, our subreddit is like generally like <laughs> we get, we're they're really really critical in our league league uh, teams. But I think I saw a post the other day. It's like, I am so proud of us. And I'm like, wow, that is the first time I've seen the word proud in our sub. Yeah, it's just all yeah. positive. It's yeah. great. But not yeah. all, but mostly. It is, it is. And like, because we're all old timers, it is pretty shocking. Like, generally, NA is built on like a pyramid of just like negativity, except to ever, like, except to only the winner. And then when the winner goes to Worlds, they also kind of just get shit on publicly. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, it is just like so refreshing to, to be in this this kind of situation. Yeah. Great. Uh, any shout outs, Grayson? Any shout outs, Sam? Uh, to you, sh champ. Shout out to my wife and dogs, <laughs> as per usual. Uh, and then I think shout out. I, I feel like since I moved from Golden Guardians to 100 Thieves, it's been like really nice in my career. Like this organization has just been like so helpful, like to me and I know like the players as well. So I'm grateful to be here. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. everyone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it from me. Yeah, I mean, uh, shout out to family who's been supporting me, fans who's been supporting us, Joseph Jang for hiring me. Um, <laughs> and me. <Yeah. laughs> Slide in a bonus, please. <laughs> <laughs> Coaching staff of, of the year bonus. Uh, no, nah, but yeah, I'm very grateful to be here, and I'm glad that uh, people are giving us the space and time to like grow and improve as a team. And yeah, just really appreciate it. So, Yeah, uh, I just wanted to shout out John. I mean, recently he's like stepped down as president, but 
Uh, he's like seen through so many different iterations of the league program, and I'm glad he gets to like leave on like a really really high note because I think he knows that the like the league program is under good hands. Um, and yeah, just shout out to the community guys. Like, uh, this is like the first year with this kind of roster where I've really seen the fans like excited about like a new blood, new energy in the room. So hopefully the coaches can deliver. Um, and on like a really amazing summer split and we'll do our best to like support them. So see you guys then. Thanks.